One of the problems with visiting New York City is we're always in such a rush that sometimes we miss amazing things right in front of our eyes. Today, I'll be sharing 10 curious NYC secrets hidden in plain sight. You don't want to miss it. This is one of New York's most romantic streets that most people never heard of. Love Lane, and you are not very far from the Brooklyn Bridge. Now, there's a lot of theories to how this street got its name. The Daily News said it was a popular spot to make out in the 1880s where men would park their carriages before dropping their girlfriends off at the all-girls school around the corner. All right, ready? Three, yep. two, one. And we just proved right there why this is one of the best Instagram spots in the city that a lot of people don't know about. That Love Lane sign could belong in the UK, correct me if I'm wrong. It would be pretty cool to tell people I live on Love Lane. A heck of an address for an Amazon delivery, no? I'll be honest, I didn't even know this existed until I did research for this video. <laughs> you may have heard of Fifth Ave, you may have heard of Sixth Ave, but have you ever heard of Six and a Half Avenue? This is the only fraction street in all of New York City. This is actually on Google Maps. It was given official signage back in 2012. But it's not just a sign, that would be cool enough. No, 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 follow me. Corridors between the streets here. This reminds me of uh, like Montreal and Toronto having those covered areas to get between blocks in the winter. I feel like this New York City insider were being chased by people and I'm like, follow me, we'll take six and a half Ave. <laughs> we need like a four and a half Avenue, a five and a half Avenue. This is amazing. Just stroll in six and a half Ave. We're in Park Slope, Brooklyn, which just happens to be my neighborhood. More strollers and people here. I love your channel. Who knew? Parents like me too. And if you walked by this sign, Art and Gifts, you might not think much of it. But what if I told you behind these doors is one of the best gift shops, stores, and art galleries I've ever seen in New York City? I hope you like monsters. I don't know what it is, but this store just brings a smile to my face. You don't have to be a kid to enjoy this place so, at all. So I'm Serene Bacigalupi. I'm the owner and creative director of Leroy's Place. The inspiration for the space comes from these monster paintings that we make in-house. And the idea is that we've brought those monster paintings to life. So a lot of the curating sort of revolves around these like monster themes. And we carry all handmade gifts made by independent artists and designers. What I find so unique about the space is how interactive it is. I mean, you could just walk up here and we have like a little puppet. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we can actually feed this tree a sandwich. Let me hear it for you. Ready? Oh! Yum, 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 I did yum. not see that coming. <laughs> I did not see that coming. This is one of the best gift shops I've ever been to in New York City. We call it our wood blockbuster. It's made by a woman named Catherine Winchester, and she does these great parodies of VHS tapes. So. I love it because there's a lot of kids in the neighborhood and they come in and they're like, what are these? Remember the movie Gremlins? Of course. But this artist designed the makeup for Gremlins. This candle legitimately, if I closed my eyes and smelled this, I'd think there was a bowl of Fruit Loops in front of me. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So this is our outdoor courtyard space and we actually have a whole calendar of community events. So we host art openings, fundraisers. Stand right here on this X. Okay. All right. All right, Ben. See? Two, one. <laughs> well, at least it's not wet. You ever in the Columbia Street waterfront district, just south of Brooklyn Heights, you might pass this sculpture garden and wonder like, what the heck is going on because there's no way you're gonna walk past this and not stop and investigate. So this was actually bought by a Dutch American, turned this old warehouse in the 1980s into this eclectic sculpture garden. A lot of iconic works from around the world are here. We have the, the Easter Island head. We have a replica of Munch's The Scream. Tutin Katmun right there. It's just really playful. That's why I like it. Now, this is private property. You can't jump over here and take photos. Be respectful of that. But you are free to come by and check out one of the quirkiest sculpture gardens in Brooklyn. This place is amazing. If you're ever crossing 7th Ave, there's a literal needle in the haystack you gotta be on the lookout for. Fashion Avenue, what a spot for this needle and button on top of the information center, paying homage to the history 
of the garment district, but there's more right here. This bronze statue was made by Judith Weller, showing her father, one of the many Jewish immigrants who moved to New York and worked in the garment district. But I think this speaks to all the hardworking immigrants who came to New York City from any background. If you've spent any time in the Big Apple, one of the most iconic things about the skyline are those old wooden water towers. And they're all still in use except for this one. Top of the MoMA sits Water Tower, a translucent sculpture made using a functioning cedar tower. It was created by an English artist, Rachel White Red, and she wanted to create something that was really New York City. That sculpture actually changes color depending on the lighting and the weather. So the next time you're walking in midtown Manhattan and you look up and you see a water tower that looks a little bit different than the others, you know why. So if you ever have the unfortunate task of needing to shop at Bed Bath & Beyond, well, at least you have this right here. 13 foot bronze statue of Captain America right in the lobby. Good old Steve Rogers. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn, hometown pride. Dave Cortez was approached by Marvel to make this statue in honor of Captain America's 75th anniversary in 2016. It's actually been shuttled to San Diego Comic-Con. I mean, I admit the location's a little bit weird. Like what next, the Hulk at Whole Foods? I don't know. I wonder how many Marvel fans just walk by, don't even turn their heads to this. Probably more than you would think. And now, I've gotta go buy a new shower curtain. Just arrived in New York City from the world's busiest bus terminal port authority. You're usually in such a rush that you won't even pay attention to a really cool statue built right here in 1999 called Ralph Cramden, who was a character that Jackie Gleason played in one of the most famous TV series in American history, The Honeymooners. And what was his profession? He was a bus driver. So it's the perfect honor to him in front of Port Authority where who knows, maybe he could have worked. Eight feet tall in bronze. Very like I'm gonna be honest, I used to commute into this building from New Jersey and it's probably my least favorite place in New York City. Because I love you guys, I wanted to show you a bonus inside of Port Authority. This is called Commuters. Three bronze statues built in 1980 to honor what most people in here are doing. They're commuting. It's actually interactive. Be a jerk and cut the line. You could wait in line. Don't touch them though, of course. And it even says, next departure, 3 p.m. And Bryant Park's one of my favorite parks in New York. It's the ultimate escape from the hustle and bustle of Midtown, but this is literally an escape. The Bryant Park escape hatch hidden underneath here. Now, if you don't know what's right there, it's the New York Public Library, world famous. Now in the 1980s, the library had a space problem and rather than move extra books to New Jersey, they built underground stacks underneath our feet right here in Bryant Park. So you can't see it, but there's 84 miles of stacks holding 5.7 million books. If somebody requests one of those books at the library, it's sent underground via an internal conveyor belt system. But the staff down there need an emergency exit, and that's where this comes in. You can't see it, it's actually covered by the names of many benefactors, but if you lift it up, there's a way out from the library underground through the park right here. So the way I see it is if there's ever a zombie apocalypse and you're getting chased to the park, you slip in here and you get into the library and you figure it out from there. That's my advice anyway. While this isn't hidden in plain sight, the Bryant Park bathroom, if you happen to be here, is not only the nicest public bathroom in New York City, it might be one of the nicest public bathrooms in the world. It's like stepping into a five-star hotel's lobby bathroom. Check it out, use it if you have to. Many people come to the Macy's and Herald Square for shopping. This is the largest department store in the world. It covers an entire city block. But we're gonna go inside to see something that most tourists have no idea about and it's practically extinct anywhere else in the world. You have to come to the ninth floor to find this, one of the world's last remaining 
wooden escalators built by the Otis Company between 1920 and 1930. You can even see the wooden slats right there. This is like a throwback to a bygone era. This is like riding on a literal time machine. That just feels different to step on this. Wow. There's one working right there going up and then the other one is working. So I, I'm counting three right now. Whoever the, the spouse is that likes to shop, leave them here and you can just ride the escalators. It's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Those escalators look so boring compared to this. If you want to see some more hidden gems, check out this video we shot just a few months ago. Five more secret spots. I think you'll enjoy this a lot.